As I said earlier, there are a number of resources available um, that you can gain access to for free to learn how to practice free shaping with your dogs. But I did want to take a second just to talk about what I think is often the most challenging part of this process, which is getting started with a dog who doesn't actually know the game yet. Oftentimes, the big mistake that I see newer trainers making when they're starting the process of free shaping is they want too much from their dog too soon. Your dog has to learn that they can do things that will cause you to produce rewards. So often in training, our dogs are waiting for us to tell them what to do. And if we're not active, then they just are waiting and waiting and waiting, or they think that we're not training and then they want to move on. So there's a few early things that we can do to really help this process along. One thing that I think is really helpful is to have a cue or a signal that tells the dog that rewards are present and there's an opportunity to get them. And we can do this really early in our training and really easily. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pick a signal. I use uh, the, the phrase, are you ready? And so when I say, are you ready? My dog knows that we're gonna be doing something fun. He knows I have some kind of reward on me and that there's an opportunity for him to earn it. When I first teach the signal, all I do is I say, are you ready? And if my dog looks at me, often you know, initially just out of curiosity because he doesn't know what I just said, the moment he looks at me, I'll say yes and I'll reward. And I'll, I, I might play with them and do some engagement work and move around a little bit and just reward them for following me around or practice some luring. But all of that was, uh, was started with the phrase, are you ready? So I'll just go, are you ready? Dog looks at me, yeah, and then I reward them. And pretty soon with enough repetition, when I say, are you ready? My dog starts getting excited and start getting activated and, and energized. And so that can go a long way towards beginning this process. The next thing, if I'm gonna start actually free shaping, meaning that I'm not gonna move around a lot, I'm not gonna give a lot of input, is when I first start out, I don't have any idea what behavior I'm actually gonna free shape. I don't have a plan. I just wanna see what my dog offers. And in the beginning stages, I'll probably mark and reward any activity on their point. So I'll bring my dog out for training, I'll have some high value rewards on me, I'll say, are you ready? And my dog might just sit there and look at me. And I'll just wait, and I'll wait, and I'll wait. And eventually they might get a little bit frustrated and they might fidget a little bit. They might move their feet around or, or shift their weight a little bit. And initially I'll say yes and just reward that. And it may take a few repetitions before my dog realizes that their movement is what's activating me and causing me to produce a reward for them. And once they learn that, and they're, they're starting to fidget more and they're starting to move more, then I can withhold the reward and ask for a little bit more. And when I withhold that reward, I'm just gonna wait and see what my dog does. Again, I don't know initially what they might do, but the first part of this process is I just wanna teach my dog that they can do something that'll cause me to produce a reward. And I don't really care what that something is. So I might have a few objects in the room and they might move towards one of those objects randomly. They might move towards me. They might offer obedience behaviors that they already know and start going through a succession of behaviors. But really initially, all I'm, all I'm rewarding and all I'm after is active behavior, active and spontaneous behavior. So don't have a plan in mind and don't go for anything big. Your first couple sessions may just involve you marketing and rewarding your dogs for shifting their weight and being fidgety. Once they progress beyond that, then you can just start to, to see what they do. And one of my words of caution is don't free shape anything and don't start reinforcing anything that you're gonna regret later. So if you have a dog that you already know you have a problem with barking a lot whenever the dog wants something from you, then don't reward them for barking. Because again, remember, behaviors that are created through shaping tend to be very strong behaviors and tend to be very durable, meaning they don't go away very easily just because you stop rewarding them. So for instance, if, you, if you're working on free shaping and your dog happens to jump up on a counter or on your table and you say, well, that's something, I'll reward that, you may regret that later on. Because if your dog starts jumping up on the, the tabletop during free shaping exercises, then you may find that anytime your dog wants something from you, all of a sudden they're jumping up on top of your dining room table. So be careful about the things that you free shape. But other than that, 
any other behavior that's something that uh, I'm not going to regret later on, I'll just start to capture and reward. And in, in um, some of the early processes with my own dogs, it may have been as simple as them, like I said, moving towards an object or mo moving towards a certain area of the room, or like I said, uh, just offering a command that they already know. But this is just the start of the progress. As your dog learns the game and as you get better at timing your reward markers and your rewards, you'll be able to go in with a game plan and actually free shape a, a predetermined behavior quite easily. But don't try and shoot for that too soon or you'll find yourself getting frustrated and you'll find your dog potentially just giving up on you and not actually enjoying the game.